clothing. Clothing naturally communicates how we feel, where we're from. It can even show status. So think about what you're wearing. If somebody is going to meet with you, they think about that too. You kind of lead in the way. If, they, if I have a friend who I know every time we go out to lunch or dinner, she's always dressed down, then I feel like, okay, I can dress down because I want to make sure she feels comfortable. If that client or that friend or that prospect I know is always dressed to the nines, then I'm like, okay, for me to build rapport with that person, I need to dress to the nines as well. So people pick up on our cues and we need to pick up on their cues too. Remember, clothing also makes people feel good. When they see something and they like it, it makes them feel good. Babies as early as six months old find things that are beautiful and they, and they really want to look at them. They really want to have them around them. So we naturally like beauty. We naturally like something, somebody that's handsome or somebody that's dressed very nice, sophisticated. That's just, in, that's just part of, I guess, our paleo system, right? We want beauty. Have you seen that before? Hey, hey Joe, nice to see you. The eyebrow flash, right? We naturally do that. We don't even think about it. If you see somebody across the room or in a place you didn't expect them, you actually, all by accident, are throwing that eyebrow flash. Sometimes the chin comes up, sometimes the hand comes up, sometimes it's all three. But that means, hey, I like you, I care about you. It shows that you're kind, that you're friendly, that you're likable. People respond to it. You were accidentally said, oh, hey, oh, I don't know you, right? See how it makes somebody feel different? Have you ever walked up to a stranger and just been, hey, give them an eyebrow flash? It feels so much different than, how you doing? Right? How you doing is like, I don't know you, I don't care about you, I don't even know if I'd lift a finger for you, but hey, hey Joe. That's like, hey, I like you, you were friends. You know, I wanna talk to you, this is exciting. It's very different. If while you're talking, if you are showing that you really don't care about the subject that you're talking about, it's gonna make them not care either. So this is part of the communication is we have to make sure that our body signals, our voice is all telling them what we want them to hear, what we want them to feel. Hmm, how does that feel compared to this? The head tilt. People like smiles, but they really like the head tilt. The, t the head tilt says, I'm receptive to you. Think about when you see a dog and a dog's looking at you head on, right? And they can have that look in their eye, right? And then they turn their head and it's like, oh, I'm trying to listen to you. I have a friend that's a dog trainer and she said it's really funny to her how the nonverbal communication works with adults, I mean with um, people and adults too, <laughs> as well as dogs, how much of it is a lot alike. So when you do the head tilt, that's showing people that you're receptive, that you're kinder, Babies love the head tilt. So starting at like around four weeks of age, if you go up to a baby and, and you, with your head straight, look at them, because you're usually looking down, right? And then if you do the same thing and tilt your head, they actually will smile at you more. The head tilt is something that as humans, we naturally like, and it's something that we don't all naturally do, except when, especially girls, are taking a picture and they put their hand on their hip and they're kind of posing. We always do a little head tilt. Have you noticed that? I don't know what that is. It wasn't like somebody taught us that. It's just something we do.